Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. So I have a bunch of stuff to talk about and not a lot of time to talk about it because YouTube likes to limit you to 15 minutes and I have a lot of things to say. So let's get right into it. So this is a legit Cree XHP 70.2 and this is a legit Cree XML2. This is a Chinese XHP 70. Alright, so the first thing I want you to notice here is the size of the LED element in this XML2 versus the LED element inside this XHP 70.2. Um, this uh, it probably isn't quite as apparent to you as it is to me, but this element is a little bit smaller than a single LED element inside the XHP 70.2. <clears throat> and, you know, there's basically... Uh, so LEDs are 3-volt elements, so that's a 3-volt LED, and this is a 3-volt, that's a 3-volt, so that's two of them in series to make 6 volts, and there's a 3-volt and a 3-volt again in series make another six volts. All right, so let me move this guy over here. I'm gonna let go, there we go. All right, so when I look at this XML2 element under a 30X loop, uh, you know, laid out exactly like this, next to this Chinese XHP70, um, this element and that element are, is to my eye, uh, the same size. I can't really tell that there's a size difference between them. And this is smaller than one of those elements. So right off the bat, just pure surface area, you know, four of these versus four of these <clears throat> is going to make more light here than it will here. Also, the quality of the phosphors are better. The uh, tolerance to heat uh, and overwatting is better in Cree than there is in the Chinese LED. So let's talk about that for a second. So um, I've um, reflowed one of these LEDs and put it on one of these little 6-volt starboards and then started upping the voltage to see what I could get out of it. And uh, on this board right here, from here to here, so you can see those two little dots of solder, uh, they are measure they're reading usually about 6.1 volts. <clears throat> so anyway, that was my starting point. Let's just see what happens at 6.1 volts. Sure enough, the LED ran. Uh, and of course, I had a starboard stuck down to a big hunk of aluminum so that I could dump heat easily. Uh, well, I started upping the voltage just a little bit. I got up to 6.5 volts, and the LED ran for about 30 seconds and burned out. Because that's how Chinese LEDs are. They are shit when it comes to overwatting. They simply don't overwatt. Um, at like 6.3 volts... Uh, another one of these LEDs. It did get a little bit brighter. I, um, I will say it did that. But I can also tell you that uh, at 6.5 volts, it was only pulling 2 amps. Only 2 amps, and it burned out at 6.5 volts. Whereas, like, this little XML2 right here, um, I've done this too. I've run them at 4 volts, and they love life. They run and run and run and run and run for days and days and days and never have a problem. Uh, and, of course, these guys here... Uh, I'm not looking for epic brightness out of them, so I typically run them at like 7.6 volts, um, uh, you know, on a 6 volt board like this, and they are super bright and they don't get too hot. Uh, you, know, you need to, once you start really upping the water, upping the wattage on these things, you uh, you quickly run out of uh, heat transfer path with a typical host, so that doesn't work so well. All right, so I want to talk about. <clears throat> this LED specifically because this one has a rather interesting but short life because of mistake on my part. So, I had read that people were taking XHP 70.2s and running them at crazy high voltages. You can see it's a 6 volt board. Uh, this LED has been on this board its entire life. And um, what I had read was that people were applying 12 volts to XHP 70.2s. So I thought, nah, come on, I, I, I have an electrical engineering degree. No way. <laughs> double its voltage. Yeah, components just don't do that. Um, so I thought, you know, hey, it's 10 bucks, so what? Burn it up, let's see what happens. So I did. Um, I put a clamp on amp meter on DC amps on uh, one of the power wires going to this little guy. Uh, I had a uh, my DMM set to volts, you know, across here to here, uh, so I could measure the voltage at the LED board. Um, so this LED was seeing 12 volts from here to here, and um, it was seeing 14 amps at the LED. 14 times 12, that gives you watts. Um, 12 times 12 is 144 watts, okay? So that should give you some idea how much wattage this LED was running at versus this guy here. 
2 amps at 6.5 volts. That's what, 18 watts maybe, 13 watts, not even close. So, you know, right off the bat, you know, just by wattage alone, uh, Cree rocks. And then I can also tell you, this little guy, um, and, and I'll talk about, you know, why it died in a second here, but uh, this little guy, uh, it was so bright. It was like looking at the arc from an arc welder. Uh, you know, for hours afterward, I had spots in my vision because it was so bloody bright. The reason why it died, uh, and, and by the way, I ran it for 10 minutes before the thermal paste that was sticking it down to the hunk of aluminum came loose and then the starboard popped off the aluminum. And that's why it died, because it instantly overheated. Um, it had already been running for 10 minutes. I mean, it had thermally stabilized by then. And it had been running for 10 minutes at 12 volts and 14 amps, or better than 144 watts. That's what you can do with a Cree LED. How long would it have run that way? I don't know. Days? Weeks? I, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't ever try to go for, you know, just stupid power out of the things. I'm looking for, you know, reliability with not too much heat, you know, low maintenance kind of a thing. But anyway, yeah, it ran for 10 minutes until it came off of the hunk of, co of aluminum before it died. And by the way, it's not really dead. It still partly works. Whereas this little guy, do one of those things, you know, just six and a half volts, two amps, and it's dead. I mean, it doesn't light up anymore. It's just toast. Whereas this guy here at... 144 watts, it still produces light. It's just, you know, not making like but 25%. All right. Um, next thing I want to show you is this. So those are legit Cree LEDs. And these are Chinese. All right. So Cree XML2, Cree XPL2. Uh, Chinese XML, Chinese XPL. You can look inside the, uh, the, the dome and you can see how much larger the LED element is on all four, or on the two Cree LEDs versus the Chinese ones. So this is what, 70%, 60% larger than that? Um, this element here, which is kind of hard to see because of the dome around it, is just slightly smaller than that area of the XML2. Just a little bit smaller, not a lot. Um, probably, um, it's bigger than this Chinese one, but not a lot bigger. <clears throat> it nearly covers the entire surface of the uh, base chip board. Uh, whereas in this guy here, this Chinese XPL2, you can see it, what, is 25% coverage on there, if that. It's probably more like 20%. Anyway, just by pure surface area, uh, take a wild guess which light is going to make, or which LED is going to make more light. Obviously, this Cree XPL2, just by surface area alone, is probably going to make, well, <laughs> a lot more light than that guy is. And the same thing over here. The, uh, the XML2 is going to make, make way more light than the Chinese XML. <clears throat> and then, of course, you can overwatt both of these guys significantly, and both these guys, they're 3-volt LEDs. Uh, you run them at 3.1 volts, they might live. 3.2 volts, they're probably dead. These guys here, run them, you know, uh, I I've run XML2s at 4 volts, and they ran. Um, these guys, I haven't done that. Um, not quite that high. Uh, anyway, let's talk about these XPLs specifically. So, uh, I have a keychain light that I like a lot. They come from China. They cost me $11 for the aluminum version, and whatever it is, $13 for the stainless steel version. Um, they are all metal construction, nice little little, little aluminum reflector inside. They've got a, a brass base on them around the LED. Uh, they have a glass lens. Very nicely made, a nice rechargeable little tiny lion cell inside. A little charge controller. You uh, can plug the thing into micro USB uh, and charge them back up off of uh, any USB source. Anyway, um, that part of the thing is quite nice. However, they've got this shitty little LED inside them that makes blue light. You know, it's a 56K LED. <clears throat> so anyway, um, in series with this LED is an 18 ohm resistor. And uh, I tried this once um, just as an experiment to see if the LED would survive. Because, you know, I always, I'm always curious to see what the Chinese LEDs can do. And so... Um, uh, I already knew that I needed to reduce that resistance to about 9 ohms uh, to run this guy properly. So that's what I did. I, I uh, put another 18 ohm resistor on top of the existing 18 ohm to get the 9 ohms, you know, to get the current up, basically. 
And uh, one of these guys, you know, it lasted for a couple minutes, and then it burned out, and then it didn't make lead anymore. It was just a total toasted piece of crap. Uh, it did get brighter for a little bit, but it didn't last. Uh, this guy, however, um, my uh, original light, um, I bought myself one, uh, whatever that was, 2015, I guess, and it's stainless steel, and it still works, you know, here it is, 2020, five years later, still producing epic amounts of light. And also, um, I bought two at the same time, two stainless steel ones. The other one I gave to my sister. And uh, one of them I left completely factory. And this guy here, after 9 ohms and the new LED, was producing easily three times more light than that guy was. And this was a nice white light with a yellow tinge to it, like the sunlight is. And this guy was very, very blue uh, and producing far less light. So, you know, a, a uh, <clears throat> less than one cent resistor a XPL2 from Cree, and I was making far, far more light. And people said, oh, well, yeah, I've got a night car. It's as bright as that. And I said, okay, pull it out. Let's see. And they're not. <laughs> my lights are way brighter than, than all that stuff is. I have yet to find somebody's keychain light that is bright as mine are, just because, you know, I've got mine driven pretty close to what the, uh, the optimal level of brightness is you can get out of these LEDs. Anyway, that's the nature of... Uh, Cree LEDs versus Chinese LEDs. You get these little tiny chips, you get much less density, you get lower grade phosphors. They can't be over-volted or over-watted in any way. You know, they just simply don't tolerate extra heat. Um, in every way possible, the Chinese LEDs are crap, lower producing uh, amounts of light, um, can't handle over watering, can't handle heat, can't be over watered in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, they're just not as good, not in any way. There's just not any way that they're as good as the Cree LEDs. So when people say things like that, like, yeah, I don't think you really know what you're talking about. Something I should do one of these days is actually build a light meter, um, which is not hard. Uh, and, and that way I can prove it, you know, show actual numbers. Last thing I want to talk about is starboards. This is my favorite starboard. I get them from Mountain Electronics in the USA. So you'll notice right here it says J equals 6 volt, R equals 12 volt. So there is J and there's J. Put a little solder blob across those. And then uh, these two traces and those two traces are put in parallel. So this basically is a 6 volt LED. Put a jumper across there. And now this and this are in series. Um, and this is now a 12 volt LED. So super handy as far as things like that. I would say most of the time I use these starboards in 6 volts um, because I use a Castle Creations Beck and its maximum voltage is 12 volts out. Uh, and that works super well for driving these LEDs. Uh, but uh, sometimes they do 12 volt work, so those starboards are super handy for that. However, these guys, uh, you can find these on eBay, um, and you can see it says 6 volts on there. So just look up uh, XHP70 starboard, and you'll find them. Uh, you buy them like in 20 at a time, I think, and they're like $14, $16, something like that for 20 of them. So a really inexpensive uh, all-copper starboard. Anyway, that's it. That's all I want to show you. Hey, folks, stay away from that damn SARS virus. Stay well. Stay healthy. Uh, don't let your body get COVID-19. <clears throat> and uh, be nice to each other. Don't be assholes. Talk to you later. Bye.